Sort of running from the last meeting to the meeting. But uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for uh, coming here. I know all of you are probably busy journalists, uh, but this is a very important theme that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, my name is uh, Mary Corbett. I am your moderator, and I would like to introduce our guest speakers, Wakao Hanaoka. CEO and founder of Seafood and Legacy Company Limited, and Ruth Westcott, campaign coordinator for Sustainable Fish Cities. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm going to introduce the topic very briefly, because basically the 2020 Tokyo Olympics uh, has turned into a bit of a litmus test for the very survivability of the Olympics. And to achieve this and to bring uh, Olympics to Tokyo, basically we promise the world something that is compact, financially manageable, and ecological. Now, these are very big themes, I think, for the future of the Olympics. And already we are encountering uh, a, a lot of it from foreign coverage, uh, sort of weaknesses in our presentation, promises that we haven't fulfilled. And it's going to be a lot of work, I think, leading up to the 2020 Olympics. And so we have the experts here to basically tell you uh, what is happening with the fish stock of the world, uh, their concerns, the figures that, that uh, they've um, investigated, so that they can give you a bigger picture of how sustainable the Olympics are going to be in Tokyo. So over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, again, nice meeting you. Thank you for having this time. Um, my name is Wakao Hanaoka, uh, CEO of Seafood Legacy. Um, we base in Tsukiji, Tokyo. Um, our mission is toward thriving fisheries and seas, and we work on designing seafood sustainability in Japan together. So Seafood Legacy supports um, uh, seafood business and environmental organization to build win-win partnership that promote healthy ocean. Um, we think uh, seafood market in Japan um, has a critical role in terms of make a sustainability uh, in terms of relationship between oceans and human. So, um, and we see this, uh, uh, this 2020 Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic as a big opportunity, huge opportunity to raise this issue inside Japan and also to the um, international um, society. Um, as we know, um, t from 2012, London Olympic, um, the sustainability issue became a key um, essence, one of the key essence in Olympic, Paralympic Games. And uh, especially because we have like uh, sushi and sashimi, is, is, is some of the iconic food that um, uh, it's popular, it's well known in all over the world, not in Japan, as a Japanese food. That's why um, there's a lot of in attention to um, uh, seafood sustainability in Japan. And in Japan also, this is a good occasion to um, um, raise, our cre raise Japan's credibility in, uh, by ensuring the sustainability of our f um, food culture as well. At the same time, um, Japan, um, we uh, were known as like uh, consume a lot of, for example, many kind of eels or like tun uh, bluefin tuna, like endangered and vulnerable species. Um, so um, this is also uh, some of the factor that it uh, cannot be ignored. So we really expected um, Japan Olympic Committee to come up with a good sustainable um, seafood procurement standard that can match uh, that can match with um, uh, London and Leo standard, or uh, I, we really expected to have beyond um, uh, much better standard in terms of seafood because it is the seafood country Japan. Um, Japan Olympic Committee they are having last working group for um, finalizing this uh, seafood procurement policy on 17th of February, so this Friday. Um, and they, uh, before that, they, uh, uh, they announced that they released the uh, draft proposal um, of the procurement policy. We revised it, we revised it, that, and we were shocked that it's a uh, 
huge um, going back from those um, London and Rio Olympic as well as it's a huge um, miss, op miss of the opportunity that we think. Um, yes. First of all, in Japan, we have a big fisheries market, but also a fisheries um, business. But in terms of um, catch, the number is decreasing and decreasing every year. Um, now, these, um, th those data, sorry, this is Japanese, but this is from a governmental figure. It says that um, compared to the peak time, we have like less of one third um, uh, catch in Japan. There's no more fish, and also there's no more fishermen because there's no fish. Nowadays, um, um, the number of fishermen is decreased to like uh, less than one fifth of the, max um, the maximum time. And half of them are over 60. They don't have next generation um, um, uh, inheriting their business. So the seafood business is really going down. Um, this is also the governmental figure showing that um, the fish stock status of the fish that um, Japan mainly catch uh, around Japan. Uh, you, can see, you can see that more than half is uh, under red, which is like not good to um, not good status. Um, uh, World Bank, they sh do a prediction of the fisheries industry. Most of the major countries, they improve the um, uh, growth, but Japan, we have a huge minus figure. Um, similar things can be seen at the FAO um, status also. It also says that um, prediction from now to uh, 2025, Japan, there's a huge minus, while other uh, countries, other major countries, they do uh, plus growth. And um, the common thing that um, the plus country do is a strict re um, fisheries regulation, stock management, which Japan is very um, uh, slow on that. So those background, we believe that, again, um, it is important to use, for Japan to use Tokyo Olympic as the opportunity to raise this issue and to, um, re to fix this um, fishery issue and get this fishery industry to be back to the um, growing um, industry. Um, now I want to go to the uh, proposal, the, the procurement uh, Tokyo Olympic Committee's proposal for the seafood procurement policy. Um, please refer to these um, two documents, the risk of um, seafood use for Tokyo 2020 Olympics, as well as this comparison chart on your uh, hands, in your hands. Um, there's a lot of problem, but here I want to highlight um, three points. The first one is about the traceability. Traceability is um, essential. Um, uh, otherwise, you cannot f uh, you cannot tell um, where this fish is from, um, who catch it, um, how it's come to the market or the um, table. And um, ensuring the traceability is the only way to uh, make sure that Japan seafood market is uh, safe from. Uh, for example, illegal fishing, unreported, unmanageable fish, unmanaged fishing, or like those like um, la uh, issues related with labels, like like slavery, um, thing, things like that. But uh, this Olympic Committee uh, procurement policy draft, it doesn't um, say that ensuring traceability is a must thing. It only says that it's good to have traceability. It's better to have traceability. So this is one point that I uh, really want to highlight. The next one is um, Ecolabel certified product. It, it, um, in London and Rio, they use um, MSC as a, a Ecolabel. And this is the, uh, one of the um, top standard, uh, global top standard um, Ecolabel. Also um, go well with the FAO uh, guideline for the Ecolabel. But uh, Japan proposal, they put other like domestic pro um, eco label, which is MEL, marine eco label. Um, and I don't say, I, I think domestic label is good, but this um, label itself doesn't have a scheme to uh, main, 
to ensure the sustainability at all. Um, for example, very clearly, um, clear example is that they don't have a clear uh, uh, standard, like what is the sustainability. They, uh, they don't say that. Uh, and also, for example, um, they certify one of the fisheries, one of the Perthane fisheries that they catch uh, Pacific bluefin tuna, um, juvenile Pacific bluefin tuna, which it says that they have only 2.6% um, of the virgin stock um, is reported. So um, although Olympic Committee, they say that um, it cannot be uh, like endangered species, it cannot be used it. Um, there's a lot of loophole uh, within this uh, Japan proposal. And also third point, they have uh, um, several uh, governmental standard for like eco label and things like that, but they don't support, they don't show any support for the public side um, initiative, uh, private sector-led improvement project. Uh, many fisheries, they are concerned, many, especially like coastal fisheries, they are very much concerned about sustainability. They realize that overfishing is happening uh, in, in, in critical mode. So they want to solve it. Um, they want to work uh, to solve it and um, start doing some improvement project. Those um, initiatives should be um, uh, accepted by this procurement policy and to establish the scheme that um, they uh, promote uh, those kind of initiatives. So those are the three um, <coughs> elements that we believe that um, Japan proposal should fix it in order to make it, um, again, uh, to make um, um, why, um, uh, ocean ecosystem, uh, seafood business, and also historical uh, culture thing between like Japanese food and the oceans, things like that. Um, in order to ensure the sustainability, I really hope that um, we use, we can use uh, this Olympic as the uh, big chance. So this is about, um, it's very rough, but it, this is about the uh, situation now in Japan. And um, I would like to introduce um, Ruth Westcott, who um, I'm so, I was so much inspired by um, hearing from um, her about the London success um, story. So could you share? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me here to talk to you today. I feel like you're, you are our hope <laughs> that we can, um, help to improve this sustainable fish policy um, before, it's, before it's too late and before the organising committee make their decision about what will be allowed on menus and what won't. The reason I'm here today is because I work for an organisation called Sustain, which is the Alliance for Better Far Food and Farming in the UK. And we were involved as advisors for the London 2012 Olympics and we worked very hard to get a strong sustainable fish standard in place for the London 2012. Unfortunately we, we didn't do very well on other issues like healthy menus and I will in a, in a little while explain a bit more how different the outcome for six years after the Olympics has been for fish compared to health. Um, when we heard that Tokyo would be considering a proposal which would allow endangered species onto menus, we were incredibly concerned that um, partly for the, for the oceans, but partly for the legacy of the Olympic movement as a whole, we did, did a lot of work to try to make sure that London would be would be leaders in this issue, and we were very concerned that this would go backwards. I've got a few slides just to show you. Ah, thank, let, just give me one second. I will bring up. Um, great. I'll just bring up a few. It's just a few very quick slides to kind of visually explain London and the legacy that we managed to achieve in the hope that you can be inspired that Tokyo could achieve this and a lot more if very strong standards are set for the Olympics. That top box is a, is, is a bit technical, but that is the standard that was set for the London Games. 
Now, the reason that it was very good was because any re red listed or endangered species were completely excluded, and that was explicit in the policy because only f those that were considered fish to eat by an internationally recognised standard would be served. That was very important because it meant that species that were considered very vulnerable or endangered were completely removed and would never have been on any menus. The second thing is that it was very short, so it was easy to understand, and it was easy for caterers to, it was easy for us as outside organisations to scrutinise the fish and to be, able to, to be able to be confident that what was sold actually met the standard and there was no grey areas. It's too important an issue to have grey areas. Thirdly, traceability was included because that is implicit in the Marine Stewardship Council certification. And fourthly, we, the, we, uh, we encouraged London to be very clear that the standards needed to be recognised internationally because London was setting itself up on the world stage as a leader and the only way to do that is if you use standards that other countries recognise as the best. So this is what the menus look like. As you can see, the sponsorship was heavy. <laughs> so the opportunity to get health into those menus was limited. And actually, London 2012 really received a lot of criticism for health, for pushing junk food. But it was very, very well received for sustainable fish. And the organisers were very proud of it. And um, it, it was a way of them being able to um, show a good side of their of their planning when when they obviously hadn't done very well on 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 health and as you can see the logo there was used the sustainable fish msc logo was used on menus um alongside the fair trade eco label and a, a uk farming label for meat and chicken Now to move on to the legacy that was created from those very strong standards. Before the Olympics, once those strong standards were in place, we, were, we as an organisation went out to other businesses to ask them to sign up to the same standards that London 2012 had signed up to. And we were able, because of the Olympic name and the Olympic movement, and because these standards were starting to become more recognised in the industry, we managed to get businesses, to other businesses, to sign up to those same standards. And we have completely revolutionised the fish that is sold in um, eaten out of home in the UK in the last six years. It's extraordinary, to the extent that I actually think it is difficult to find fish that is endangered on menus in the UK anymore. The only places that you can find it are in very good sushi restaurants, <laughs> unfortunately. But this is why we need to do something to change the culture in, in Japan as well. Um, just to highlight some of the achievements, the first graded box is that the Mayor of London agreed just before the Olympics that all fish sold to, it, to the police, to the fire brigade and in all schools in London would meet the same standard as, as the Olympic Games. And that has carried on since, so that is the legacy that has happened from the Games. Secondly, if a little bit further on, just above 2014, all schools in the UK adopted standards for sustainable fish. I've written recommended because actually lots of the schools in the UK are independent, so they don't have to meet the standards, but for state schools. Move on a little bit, 2015, we managed to persuade the government to introduce sustainable fish standards for all hospitals in England. And that is a huge chunk of catering. And this was all because the industry now and the caterers and the suppliers were used to that standard because it's what had been set for the Olympics. They all believed that once the Olympics get that standard, that becomes normal. And they all started to just switch their products around. These graphs show now what the situation is in 2016. Um, 
so those different sectors of catering have adopted sustainable fish standards to a greater or lesser extent. The Olympic standards are kind of dark blue, and then some have got some standards, but they're not quite as good as the Olympics yet, and they're the ones that are lighter blue. But as you can see, in the UK, that now the Olympic standards now apply to three quarters of all the fish served in hospitals. Universities, it's just about a third. For staff catering, which includes prisons, uh, public sector institutions, but also workplaces and government buildings, we're talking about just about a third, and that is in the last six years since the Olympics. It is crazy that the organisers do not want to set strong sustainable fish standards. If you look at London, they really use the sustainable fish standards as an opportunity to celebrate. And in fact, it wasn't just the organising committee, but it was the wider kind of political and like high profile people in London used every opportunity possible to celebrate the success of the Olympics, of the fish standards at the Olympics. They held events, they had the Mayor of London, who is that guy who's now the Foreign Secretary on the top, Boris Johnson, he went round to the fish market and had this amazing press thing. And um, it is a way, of a really clear way, of creating a legacy for the Games. Once the athletes have gone home and once those venues aren't being used anymore, those standards can be put into place because the, the uh, supply chain will adapt and they will, they will stay like that for a long time. So, um, I still run this project now and we're still gathering uh, commitments from businesses to sustainable fish. And um, that is how I kind of got involved with WACAO in this project. And when we heard that the standards might be really poor and set us back, we were very keen for this not to happen, so we have written to the organising committee to set out why we think this is a disaster. And um, once some of our colleagues within the 2012 organising committee found out that we were doing that, they have also written statements of support to the organising committee of Tokyo. And one of the key advisers to Boris Johnson has written to Tokyo and all of those statements are included here. Um, I don't know whether Waka you want to talk more about the statements that we've received from across the world and from London or yeah okay. But, but it would be good if you can introduce some of Yeah should I read out the ones? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. I wanted to read to you a short selection of some of the some of the statements of support and encouragement that businesses um, experts and advisors to the London 2012 have written to um, to the organisers of Tokyo. So the first one Rosie Boycott is the Mayor of London's Chief Advisor on Food and she said this in the lead-up to the 2012 Olympic Games, we knew that we had the opportunity to show that our city could lead the world and to set standards that, with the support of businesses and citizens, could become normal. I am delighted that the strong 2012 Olympic standards for fish set in motion a project which has, been seen, which has seen many large and influential fish-serving businesses follow the same standards, bringing sustainable fish to millions of citizens across the UK. Overfishing is a critically important issue globally. We only have a limited amount of time to tackle the problem before it's too late. I offer you, the organisers of London 2020 Games, my full encouragement and support in developing strong standards for the Olympic Games and urge you to take the opportunity, whilst the world is watching, to set standards that will be an example to other cities globally. The work that we did in London helped to influence other large events in the UK, as well as the Rio 2016 Olympics, and I urge you to take the opportunity to leave a strong legacy for future Olympic Games. Okay. The second statement here is from um, Sustain, who were one of the advisors for the 2012 Food Vision. Dear colleagues on the Tokyo Organising Committee of the Olympic and Paralympic Games, 
We are writing to you having worked closely with the organisers of the London 2012 Olympic and Paralympic Games, as well as running a successful sustainable fish legacy project. We are very keen to share some of what we learned and ask you to be the next leader on this issue by setting stronger, clearer standards for sustainable fish for Tokyo 2020. Over 90% of the world's fish stocks are now overfished or fished to full capacity. This is an issue of global concern. Arguably, the Olympic and Paralympic Games are one of the only opportunities for transformational action to shift businesses and consumers to sustainable consumption of precious shared resources. We would like to stress the importance of the food standards at the Olympic and Paralympic Games for proving that sustainable fish can be served at a large scale and inspiring businesses, athletes, the media and the public to be part of an inspir inspirational movement for change. Drawing on our experience, we see that if Tokyo 2020 were to set high standards for fish, the Tokyo 2020 Seafood Legacy Team can easily persuade other businesses to do the same. Your influence will be far greater than for the period of the Games. In London, we started working on Sustainable Fish Legacy for London as early as, 20, eight, 20, as, as early as 2008, launching the Sustainable Fish Cities campaign formally in 2009 to start to build the momentum early. Since then, we have supported and helped over 230 businesses to sign up to the same standards as the 2012 Games, including the UK government for all government departments, prisons and UK hospitals, about one-fifth of schools, over a third of universities and six of the largest contract caterers in the UK, serving over 0.7 billion meals per year. We would not have achieved this without the strong standards set by the London Organising Committee in their planning for the London 2012 Games. And that statement is included in the pack. Okay. 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 Do we need to carry on? Should I do your compass? Um, do they, does everyone have copies of this? Yes, you do. Yeah, Be, you've got because copies. then I think we would rather uh, spend some time on Q&A. Yes, sure. Yeah, or yeah. Please, please complete your presentation, whatever you want to present. But if they can read this for themselves, I think it's more important we be able to ask you some questions. Definitely. Okay. Absolutely. So, yeah. Sorry, those statements are not in your handout, but it's, it's, it's now online um, just a few hours ago. So if you can go to the um, URL show at um, this document, there's a link here. If you see, if you go, you, you can find all the statements from, from that um, link. Yep. Um, it's just saying that it's not only from uh, London. It, it, we get a lot of good um, statements from London, um, including this Compass Group, um, one of the or the biggest um, catering company. Right? Compass Group is the largest catering company in the world, and they have sites. They, they their clients include Google and Apple. Um, they've got nearly twelve thousand sites in the UK, and they provided this statement to say, "We as a company would like Tokyo to do better," and we as a business say we can we can do better and Tokyo is not setting the bar high enough mm. and also not from London um, we get a lot of um, um, statement from US Rio um, some like fish um, um, supplier that do the um, uh, they do the supply, they did the supplying to Rio uh, Olympics. Uh, those companies um, and many NGOs and those um, you can see in this website. So um, it shows that it's not only a domestic thing, um, a big global um, eyes are watching at um, how Japan. Uh, can use this Olympic as an opportunity, Olympic Paralympic as an opportunity. And also, um, I want to add to my um, part of the presentation that I mentioned about domestic eco label. I don't say, again, um, I don't mean that domestic is bad thing. I think um, if we have a good um, standard um, domestic eco label, that's going to be a hope of our um, to um, achieve the sustainability in Japan water. Um, that's why, that's especially why um, we believe that um, it shouldn't be inside um, this procurement policy 
when the domestic standard is not um, achieving the global standard. And also, um, that's the reason why that um, we understand that this domestic um, um, equilibrium, they are showing their willingness to improve their um, standards. So Seafood Legacy is, again, I'm happy to support for those initiatives. And also, um, yes, this is about London, um, to I mean, sorry, Tokyo Olympic um, game. But this um, see in the uh, story from London, we understand that this procurement policy, that this can be a big trigger to um, make Japan seafood market um, work more on sustainability. Um, actually, we see a lot of um, um, uh, initiative from the market side in Japan is happening. It's like 10 years, 15 years slow. It might be um, slow from uh, many of the Western nations uh, markets, but it is happening. So we don't want to uh, make this pro We don't want to misunderstanding or uh, confusing those market players by having this kind of um, Tokyo Olympic program. Okay, man, policy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll be taking questions first from Working Press. Uh, please come to the microphone and uh, give us your name and affiliation. Please. My name is uh, Richard Tosilo from Indonesia. Uh, I got actually a lot of questions for uh, both uh, for. Can, can we start with maybe one each, and then if we have time, we'll come back to you? Because one, one, one each and one, one each. Yeah. Okay. OK. So for Ms. Westcott, I saw that uh, you are active from the uh, London 2012, and then 2016, and then now. So why don't you make, uh, or maybe you have made a kind of proposal to the uh, Olympic Committee, the mm -hmm. IOC. Why don't this is my idea? What about what about if you make a, a coordination with co Olympic Committee and then make a Olympic food standard, such kind yeah. of this kind of standard? So we are not uh, saying about MSC, AAC, whatever. So this is Olympic standard. So it's time they will implement on the uh, the countries uh, 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 organize the Olympic. Uh, and then the question for Mr. Uh, Hanoka. Uh, actually, it's a little bit slightly different from this uh, team. But uh, recently, uh, we heard from uh, the survey from NHK that one sixth of the uh, children in in Japan is relatively poor. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we are talking about the food. Why don't you think it's better for the country to fo focus first for the food for the the children and then uh, and then for the uh, Olympic? And then how about the halal food for the Olympic 2020? I I need your comment about this one. Thank you. Yep. Great. Yeah. Um, the international organizing committee have very vague sustainability policies, general sustainability policies, which they, for example, they have um, policies against using endangered species when you make Olympic um, merchandise. You couldn't use an endangered species to make an Olympic phone cover. But they do not, those do not extend to food at the moment. So you could have, a, you could eat an endangered species at an Olympic Games, but not by a, a phone case that was made from an endangered species. It's a real loophole. But I, I think unless Tokyo sets strong standards, we risk the momentum being lost. So we would struggle to get the IOC to set high standards because one of the world leaders in food thought that that was not important or too difficult. I would love that would I would really like maybe that could be, that should be our next you know that would be our next aim to try to get this to be um, to get this to be normal but unless we get Japan to get on board with that the IOC won't they don't, they won't um, believe that those kind of standards are important and were achievable hmm. I think. But concept-wise, I agree to your um, proposal. I um, really think that um, sustainability should be the should be a, like core essence of the culture of Olympic itself. So um, it 
that's especially why we don't want to um, we don't want Tokyo to make the uh, bar down at this moment. We want, it would be great if we can show the escalation from here. And to answer to um, question to me, first about the uh, yes uh, poorness in Japan. Yes, um, those numbers are increasing. I that's I think that's linked very much to the sustainability. Sustainability is a long term, but um, it's an essential term. It's not only about the seafood, but um, about environment, culture, business, every, every um, aspect that we um, uh, live in daily life. So uh, ensuring sustainability and also like making um, uh, decision makers, market players, consumers, um, voters, everybody to uh, have clear understand uh, about sustainability is a uh, um, challenge, challenge, and that, that's what we, I think, have to do in Japan. And again, Olympic is a very good opportunity to do that, that we think. And about the Harar, yes, um, I think we should have that. Um, Olympic, it's, it's about um, diversity, it's an important issue also. And um, Japan, it's still small, but market-wise, um, more and more market players are starting to uh, get into this Harar business as well. So yes, um, at the procurement or like um, uh, the rule for the Olympic, it uh, should be mentioned and it should be um, secured, I think. Thank you. Next question. Uh, Errol Sam. Thank you for the presentation. My name is Errol Ahmed. Um, I have two questions, but I'll start with the first one. What exactly are you trying to achieve here? The 17th is a deadline that you're trying to impact mm. the outcome? Or you're trying to impact the industry to adopt uh, standards that are not in the proposal? Mm. That's the first question. <coughs> if there's no one else, then I'll come back and ask the second yeah. question. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Or? Yeah, sure. Yes. Yes. yes thank you. Um, yes. We want to make a change happening before the before this um, procurement policy is finalised. It. Yes. But if uh, it cannot be, I mean, uh, we have many objectives. One is that. The other is, um, like you said, influencing the market. Make um, make the don't stop market initiative through um, this uh, program policy. Uh, yes. Mm, yeah. I mean, for me, I think having seen what what can ha what opportunity the Olympics can bring to change the food industry when you set high standards, I, I just re I would really like the Olympics to be a catalyst for change in in any in any city that it um, is a in any city that the Olympics is hosted. But I just think that of all of the cities that have an opportunity to change the um, culture of overfishing, then it's Tokyo is just seen as the, like globally, Tokyo and Japan is just seen as the country for seafood. And, you know, if we can't take the opportunity to change that now, I, um, I don't know, that's why we've kind of rushed to get these statements together to really try to really try to it's like a you know a really kind of quite a desperate situation to try to get this to change i don't know when the next opportunity is that the the eyes of the world will be on tokyo to try to to, to get this issue raised as important um but yeah as waka said mm -hmm. we'd like to support this mission beyond you know if if, if the, the policies aren't good we will try other options we'll go to the international organizing committee and see if they can help but Really, the 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 issue. The aim is the seventeenth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Japan Olympic Committee. I think they are um, too much. In, uh, they have a influence or pressure. I don't know uh, appropriate English, but um, a lot of um, yeah, influence. Pressure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From, from especially from domestic fisheries industry. That's why. Um, so that's 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 why we want to show more uh, good st um, success story um, from previous uh, London and pro previous games, as well as a lot of attention from um, N NGOs and uh, Western companies, and yes. 
I have a very generic question. We hear so much about sustainable Olympics. They have to be sustainable. Why is it so ill-defined? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what are we talking about when we're talking about sustainable Olympics if people have different understanding of what it means and you don't have those benchmarks? Oh, yeah. It, it, I wish I could answer that question. I think um, I, well, I, 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 do, I think there's a role for the IOC, but also they've always been um, keen to allow local, the cities that's hosting, to define what sustainability means to their city mm. um, and, and what it means for the people and the culture, because sustainability is social, environmental and economic, and that social is very culturally different in different mm. cities. So, mm. you know, in a way, I, I would sort of support the idea that this, a city can define its own... But what could they have a yeah. lowest bar that everybody has to, I mean, below which you should not fall and call yourself sustainable? I don't know. Yeah, well... Like I building standards. I think, I think we've already had a huge debate in Tokyo about the national stadium that was cancelled. But huh. a lot of the materials were definitely not sustainable. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a topic now. The public, mm. I don't think, thinks this is an issue yet. Mm. Did you sense resistance when you talked to these um, officials or started communicating with the... Is it entirely the fisheries just blockading any communication on this or...? We, we, we encountered some resistance from the organizing committee in London initially. Um, yes, but not from the businesses because they see how much fish has increased in price over time and how difficult it is to get the species that they used to get regularly mm. they know that the fish is running out and they've seen the problem um, so they were very supportive about a strong policy and that's why compass has given us this statement because they they see it as a threat to their own business but um, w it did take us a bit longer to get the I, I mean <coughs> I just think yeah there are there are different um, you know di complicated issues around buildings and stuff but for fish it is fairly easy fa fairly simple i think we, that fish is one issue that the international community can kind of agree about and uh, get behind and i think if if tokyo becomes the third to set these similar strong sustainable fish standards it will become the norm i do think it will become the norm for um for the it, for, for the olympics to have strong fish standards but if they don't i, I think we've, we've we'd we'd have a a very tough ask for the next Olympics, I think. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? I think we have a little bit of time now. Thank you. Errol, go ahead. Thank you for this opportunity for the second question. It's a little bit actually confused question because I'm confused about uh, this whole overfishing thing. Are you, um, I understand that Japan fish catch fish is fish catched cost declining and people want to eat fish and there is no fish. This is the general situation when we talk about sustainability. Am I correct here? Are you, for example, supporting um, things that are not coming from the sea, for example, aquaculture or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Are you proposing something, a solution like that, or this is just about the fish in the ocean? Um, I know it's a confused question, mm. but you know, I'm trying to understand okay. that part of the equation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. thank yeah. you. <laughs> yes, um, we, we are suggesting a series of um, solution or um, action uh, what they can do um, one is to uh, uh, the first thing to do is like just stop eliminate um, procuring endangered overfish species then um, go more procure more procure more uh, um, good status environmentally sustainably good status fish like global uh, adapt to global standard and serve more sustainable seafood other thing is to secure sustainable supply so um, it's not certified yet as a eco in an eco label, but if they show a um, good improvement and if it's transparency, transparency and independence is in ensured, then uh, that's the one that we should support. And also, uh, in order to combat those illegal and unreported, unregulated fishery, um, it's 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 must that um, we have to ensure the traceability as well. 
So those are the combination that we are proposing. And also, if uh, even for um, Olympic or uh, market player, business player, who is not directly um, working on seafood issue, they can do um, the same thing for, um, for example, like cafeteria for their um, um, stuff and things like that. So those are the um, series that we are proposing. So it's not about um, just simply don't eat fish or let's eat fish, but choose, choose um, what fish to eat and things like that. My name is Marina and I'm a student at Waseda University. So I have a question about the uh, standard that you touched on uh, earlier. Um, I believe you mentioned that the Olympic standard becomes the national standard or that's what it was like in London. And I'm wondering what created that public perception and how we can apply that in Japan as well. Thank you. Ooh. Well, to be honest, it was the Olympics that created that, um, that began to create the movement. There was, there was a few b very um, forward-thinking businesses that had done it already that we'd been able to encourage to adopt a good standard already. But it, it was the Olympics which we used to be able to go and talk to other businesses and say, if you don't meet the, Olymp if you don't meet the Olympic standards, it looks bad. And the first people we spoke to were the sponsors of the Games and... Um, businesses in London that had an association with the games, universities, and it was amazing how quickly once a, um, a few businesses signed up that used the same supplier or the same caterer, message spreads up the supply chain and then the businesses in the supply chain start to change their policies to make it easier for their customers to buy sustainable fish. And once that change starts to happen, it gets every, with every business that signs up, it gets easier and easier and easier for these standards to become the norm. And then the government, who has got enormous buying power, can kind of just ask for what they want and their supplier will, will meet their needs because they're a very powerful buyer. And so once the government in the UK said, we only want to buy fish that meets this standard, the suppliers changed. And then once they did that, it became easier. But honestly, the f initial pressure came because the Olympic standards were seen as what was going to be the, the new norm, because that was, there was such a buzz created about the Olympics for everything. Yeah, is that, is that happening? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Um, I think the gentleman in the front row, did you want to follow up with another question? No, no you're okay. okay now? Okay, well, I have a question. If nobody else is asking, we'll wrap up soon, but um, you've now communicated with some business interest groups and government. What can be done in Tokyo to facilitate the change of consciousness? Mm. I mean. Like I say, I think this is a non-issue for most of the public. It's not something that it's on our news. Mm. And uh, but I think legacy is important. Legacy is not discussed so much here yet. Uh, the governor is starting to talk about it. So mm. should the cover governor hire you two as consultants? <laughs> or, uh, what can we do? That's high profile. If you could get to yeah. the governor, yeah. Mm, good question. Well, I've got lo enough to do in the UK still, so I don't know. But, uh, the, um, well, I think that we should all be asking the governor, what is the plan now for the legacy? Like, what, like, what is your, everybody talks about it, but if you go to, we, we sort of went to the governor saying, um, you know, Sustainable Fish City, Sustain, the organisation that I work for, here we are, we are your legacy, and they were looking for projects to support. So I think if you as a, you the people, can come up with what you would like the legacy to be and go to them and say, I think there is an opportunity to help frame what you would like the legacy to be, because they probably aren't thinking about it. So I hope that, that you know, that, that the um, seafood legacy will be able to go to the governor and say, this is exactly what the legacy should be, support our 
movement. And the first step in supporting the movement is strong standards for sustainable fish in the Olympics, and then also following up with whatever catering the mayor and the municipality c can influence as well locally, you know, um, with whatever catering they do. But um, it was a problem in 2012 as well that w they didn't start thinking about the legacy early enough. And I, I hope Tokyo does better. I mean, yeah. I d <laughs> Is 2017 early enough? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> or, I mean, I, even this. I'm hopeful because this standard is early. We yeah. were still not deciding the food standards until 2011. So, oh, okay. yeah. So we have a bit of time. Yeah, so no, I am very impressed with the organization, you know. Okay. Actually, mm -hmm. it was earlier than we, that's why we are, you know, having, we had to get these statements very quickly. And I think if we had a few more months, we would have got a lot more statements from a lot more people. Um, but it, it has happened quickly and, um, that is a testament to the organisation. It's very impressive, but yeah. also, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, a bit scary. Okay. Go ahead. And also the governor, um, Yuriko Koike, um, she had a speech at our, pre our um, market symposium, sustainable seafood market symposium um, held last year in November. Um, Ruth was there also. Mm. And she, um, Yuriko Koike, the governor, she was clearly saying that Sustainability is the issue. Tokyo, we want to make we want to bring sustainability into Tokyo through Olympic. And they say, uh, she says that um, she wants to make this movement with sympathy or empathy. Or what, what is the good? Can we use, what is the good English? I'm not sure. Um, so, so that um, it's not top down, but all the citizens who understand the concept and who work together, um, things like that, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, she is creating, showing her willingness and initiative. I think, um, yes, we have to, um, we are very much happy to make it more concrete. Yeah. Good. Okay, any last words that we should be taking out to the world? Please help. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I really feel like this is a, we're, it's been a very uh, rushed process really and when we, fa you know, I've come over here today for the, this conference because I'm, at, you know, I'm really looking to you as um, the people who can help influence this to please help make sure that this isn't a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I can't stress enough how important those standards were for creating a change in the UK and I don't know when the next opportunity would come for for Japan and Tokyo to be to be given the opportunity to change this mm -hmm. issue um, on an issue that's so important globally um, and for which Japan is seen as such a leader. One question. Oh. Uh, yeah, we are talking about the uh, appealing to use the uh, uh, standard, whatever. So as a human being, have you think about the, uh, the sanction? What about if we are not using the standard? So what kind of sanction? Have you think about that one too? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we're really hopeful that we won't have to. <laughs> but um, I think the next step would be to go to the IOC, to the International Organizing Committee, and make the case that, the, the, you know, the, the sanction would be that we, we, we can't support as an, as an international community concerned about environmental issues, we, we, we cannot support this a policy that would allow this and put pressure on the IOC to put pressure on Tokyo. But that would be, it would look really bad for Tokyo. It would not be a very good, it would not be a great, uh, we would hope not to do that because we would like to work, it would, we would like this to be a really positive experience and really work with the organizers and allow this to be an opportunity for Japan to be seen as leaders and it would really be, I would hate to have to do it, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yes, uh, as, as it says, we still have three more years. I, um, this program policy itself is a missed opportunity, I strongly think, but um, we really hope to um, make use these three years to um, recover from those and make this Tokyo Olympic as a success uh, to establish legacies for the next generations. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, go ahead.
Hello, um, Teddy Jimbo with the Video News. Um, I don't know, it may sound a little bit a silly question, but what's the worst thing that the Japanese government or the Olympic Committee can do? And if that happens, what does it mean uh, for Japan, for the world, and for the susten sustainability of uh, uh, the food stocks? Thank you. Well, I think the current the current proposal <laughs> is about is about as bad as it gets, really. I think that's the proposal that's on the table at the moment is if they just don't do anything, if they just leave it, it would be um, it would be a disaster. And I think that would sorry the implications for the well, yeah, as I say, I think the implications are that it would we would need it would need to go to the next level. Really, we would need to go to to the IOC and try to put pressure internationally on on Tokyo. Um. And also, I think this is about the credibility, credibility of Japan in global um, um, society. So if we, cannot le if we cannot establish design and establish a good um, positive legacy, uh, there will be a huge negative legacy in Japan that, we, that I really don't want to see. Mm, I think already, even just in the few weeks that we've had to gather these statements, it's clear how, how many people are concerned about like about Japan's I impact on seafood and how much they really would get behind a good policy and um, it's just it would be such a missed opportunity not to not to do better yeah okay so uh, okay. I'd like to thank our two speakers today it was very enlightening for me uh, thank you all for coming today and um, Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.